Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin and welcome to my Feldenkrais YouTube channel. Today's lesson is the second lesson in the intermediate series I have been teaching um, called Happy Hips, Happy Knees and Happy Feet. It's a, a lesson that I've wanted to teach for some time but I've always hesitated to do so and that's partly because the bulk of the lesson is done lying on the on the floor and I didn't think it would it would be that easy to teach and talk at the same time but it's a wonderful lesson um, for many many reasons um, I love it because of what it does to my students back how it makes them backs how it makes them much more supple and um, it does amazing things for your hips as well so please begin by coming to lie down on your mat and if possible have the legs long and take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor so one thing you can think about is how the legs are organised are your toes pointing out towards the ceiling or are they um, pointing out to the side maybe you have an asymmetry with one set of toes pointing up and the others resting out, out to the side. So um, just begin to notice these things and then um, bring your attention to the pelvis, how that's making contact into the floor and the back generally. So one thing with the back is just to sort of ask how much of the back is resting down into the floor as you begin to begin the lesson. Quite a few people you'll discover that the ribs are pushing up meaning that there's quite a large gap in the area of the uh, large gap that the hands can slide under behind you for others the ribs will be much softer um, allowing much more of the back to rest down notice how you've chosen to place the arms whether your shoulders are down or maybe you'll discover they're lifted up away from the floor and then bring your attention to where you're making contact on, on contact on the back of the head and then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other just to discover how that is today whether you detect a difference in the way the head is turning to the right say compared to the left and then just by way of preparing us for the lesson, bring your attention to your right foot and without seeking to correct the leg in any way, um, begin just to gently point and flex the foot. So when you point the foot, you're sending the toes away from you. And when you flex the foot, you're drawing the toes towards the head and sending the heel away from you. So again, just just a few pointing and flexings of the of the right foot, and then pause, and then do the same with the left foot, and just pointing and flexing. You can change where the toes are pointing as well, just to um, change the angle of the pointing and flexing. And if you've had any kind of injury to one side, um. Uh, um, a sprain or anything like that then don't be surprised if you discover that there's a different range of motion between the the two feet Good. and then pause please leave that alone and bring your feet to standing so you bend the knees and bring the legs to standing and I suspect most of you, when you do that, you'll notice something changing in the area of the lower back. So usually by bringing the legs to standing, it takes the weight of the legs off the spine and enables the lower back just to settle a little bit more clearly to the floor. So something um, just by way of a warm up that I often teach in my classes here in Rutland is to imagine that your pelvis is lying on a clock it's painted on the back of your pants at the back of your sacrum and 12 o'clock is towards the head and six o'clock is towards the feet could you begin to roll your pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head 
and then think of rolling the pelvis towards the feet towards six o'clock. So you're just exploring rolling the pelvis to 12 o'clock and then towards six o'clock. And um, there are really two ways um, to think about this, two main ways. One is to press into the feet, press the feet down into the floor, and that will help roll the pelvis towards the head towards 12 o'clock. And the other is to think of the feet becoming light without actually lifting them to help send the pelvis to six o'clock and arch the lower back. So using effectively more the leg muscles, recruiting the leg muscles to assist with the movement of the pelvis. Another way, however, is to think more of actively using your tummy and um, back muscles. So when I go to 12 o'clock, I think of pulling in a spot about two inches um, below my navel. And when I go to six o'clock, I think of pushing out that spot towards the pubic bone to help arch the lower back. So here we're using more um, trunk muscles to bring about the movement. But um, just as you note, as you do a few more of these 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock mo movements, just notice what's happening with the middle and upper ribs. You see, quite often, something I, f I um, find in class is that the ribs will be very, very held, and often they're kind of held and protruded. And people are doing this marvellous thing with the pelvis, differentiating it, but keeping the ribs um, kind of blown out or um, pushed out. So one thing I ask my students to do is to have a hand resting on the breastbone and the other hand very low down on the tummy. And when, they go, when you go to, to, to 12 o'clock, it's not just pulling in the tummy, it's allowing the bre breastbone, the ribs, to soften, to be pulled down and in as well. Uh, and, and when you go to 6 o'clock, it's as though the breastbone and the pubic bone are just lengthening away from each other. Um, so... It's what I call our extended definition of 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, where we include the chest, the ribs, in the idea of the movement of the pelvis, so that we get much more of the spine involved. And um, it's worth just practising that, because you'll find it useful for some of the lesson to come. Just once you've explored that a few times, allow the legs to go long. And then please come to lie on your front. So, uh, I should say, for many people, as they get older, um, find coming onto the front uncomfortable. Certainly I did when I began my Feldenkrais training, but... Um, I love it. <laughs> I love it now. It's a, a very comfortable place for me to, to be and often sleep on my front as well. So if you need a break from the position during the course of the lesson, if you need more time for rest, come onto your back. Please don't hesitate to turn off the, off the film and um, take that rest. But otherwise, come to lie on your front. It's where my glasses get in the way. I, I hope you can hear me okay. And then organise yourself so that your left cheek is on the mat. Your right hand, which you'll be looking at, is just somewhere comfortable near the head. And have your left arm down by your side. And then once you've found this position, begin to roll your pelvis to the left and then come back to centre. 
So you can imagine you've got a piece of string or something on your tailbone and you're rolling your pelvis to the left and then you come back to centre. They're just exploring this initial movement, rolling the pelvis to your left. And as you perform a few of these movements, you'll be, perhaps begin to notice if you draw your attention to the spine where I'm pointing, you'll begin to notice that the movement of the pelvis, of course, is beginning to introduce a twist into the spine. It just, um, uh, the movement of the pelvis brings a little bit of a twist into the spine. Now, pause for a moment and, and I just invite you to look at me on the screen if you're doing the lesson along with me is what I often find in this lesson, and one of the reasons the front position is uncomfortable, is when I ask people to move the pelvis, they just move the pel pelvis. So rather like on the back when they do the 12 and 6 o'clock movements, they're just thinking of this area. But actually, if you can think of as I'm as you're rolling the pelvis, you're allowing the weight to shift to the left hand side of the breastbone. So more weight comes into the left hand side of the breastbone. It makes the this twist travel much more easily along the spine. Um, into the area between the shoulder blades. So, just as on the back, we have the extended definition of 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock for the pelvis that included the chest, so too in this lesson I'd encourage you to kind of really also think of an extended definition so that when I'm moving the pelvis, I'm not trying to confine it just low down, I'm allowing the whole of my weight to shift over towards the left hand side as I move the pelvis. So just doing a few more of these and as you begin to explore this fairly simple movement you'll perhaps notice how your legs, if you pay attention to the legs, begin to do something interesting. They begin to organise in a certain way so that the inside of the right knee begins to present to the floor and the inside of the foot too. You don't have to make that happen. It happen will happen provided you move the pelvis to the left and then come back to centre. Once you've just explored a few more of these, then pause and please turn everything around to the other side so that it's your right cheek on the floor. You're looking at your left hand, which is by the head, and your left right arm is somewhere down by the side. And begin to explore your ability to roll the pelvis using our extended definition of the pelvis um, to the right, towards your right hand. So you're just rolling the pelvis to the right, allowing the weight to shift to the right hand side of the chest and noticing how this is beginning to introduce a twist that can travel all the way up through the spine. And then notice too how the legs begin to organise as a result of the movement of the pelvis so that this time the inside of the left knee and the inside of the left foot 
begin to present towards the floor. And then please pause, leave it alone, and come and take a rest on the back. On the back. And notice when you come onto the back, I should say, by the way, I'm just recovering from a dose of COVID. Um, it's been quite a nasty dose of it for the past two weeks, so I hope my voice is okay, you're hearing me clearly. Take a moment to notice how you're um, uh, lying, notice how those ribs are feeling, so by lying on the front, it's in, we've been encouraging the ribs to adapt to the floor. Maybe you'll feel them having softened down a little bit. And then please just roll the head and eyes again a little bit from right to left. And then please pause and come to lie back on your front. Once you're on the front, have the left cheek again on the floor, the left arm down by your side, and your right hand just somewhere comfortable near their head. So the elbow is down. And then begin again to roll your pelvis to the right, to the left, sorry. So again, thinking about it's not just the pelvis, can you allow the weight to shift to the left? And side of the chest. And as you begin to find this movement of the pelvis, noticing how that right knee begins to present to the inside of to the inside of the knee to the floor, you could begin to think of sliding that right leg up alongside you and then sending it away. So you're sliding the right knee up alongside you and then sending it away. Now this movement of the leg, try not to lift the leg to drag it in position or lift the foot. The leg stays fairly passive and you're really trying to bring about this movement of the leg because of the way that you're organising the movement in the pelvis and the chest. And then to slide the leg away from you, again, you will think of the movement coming from the centre. So you roll the pelvis to the left, to slide the leg up alongside you and then you roll the pelvis away. Now, one other thing to think about that again I see sometimes in class, particularly if a student has a quite contracted lower back muscles, the back is a little bit stiff is that when they try to slide the leg, up along, the leg up alongside them, they're staying very much in six o'clock, lower back muscles contracted. So could you think of our 12 o'clock and six o'clock movement so that you're pulling in the tummy and softening the chest, tummy and chest together, to bring the leg alongside you and then you um, uh, lengthen the chest and the pubic bone away from each other to return to long legs. So you roll, pull in the tummy, soften the chest to bring the knee up alongside you. So there's a movement in your middle and then you extend the leg away from so just doing a few more of these, just getting used to it, and then going away. Now, again, something that happens if the chest is a bit, and back are a bit stiff, is to 
if a student is really thinking, oh, it's getting the knee up, they'll do this. Oh, can you see? Move the whole of the chest and, and the pelvis as a piece to try and create the space. Um, and they're not really allowing that twist to develop. So go slowly. So I, to move the pelvis to the left to soften the chest so that you're kind of peeling yourself away from the floor just enough from the pelvis upwards to allow that knee to come up alongside you. Now the next time the knee is up alongside you, pause there and then um, just try to bring your attention to the right heel and just lift the heel away from the floor and bring it back down. So just lifting and lowering the heel. Kind of just pivoting around the big toe effectively to lift the heel. And as you lift and lower the heel, just see if you can notice that what's happening with the lower leg, it's rotating in a certain direction, it's rotating around the knee. See the calf muscles are sort of lifting up towards the ceiling. And as you're lifting and lowering the heel, you might kind of feel something also happening in the area of the hip joint. So just lifting and lowering. And then pause keep the heel down. Now think there's a balloon attached to your little toe and you're just lifting and lowering the front of the foot towards the ceiling. <clears throat> and notice how the rotation in the lower leg feels much more restricted in this direction but the rotation is in a different direction to when we lifted the heel. Okay, just see if you can notice if it has any impact at all in the area of the hip joint. And then pause and then begin to alternate lifting once the heel and then the toes. Heel and then the toes. Lifting the toes and then the heel. Good. And then pause and just see what's it like. Could you begin to lift the foot away from the floor and then bring it back down? So you're just lifting the foot away from the floor, pivoting on the, on the knee lifting and lowering and as you do lift the foot so however high you get it is fine it might be much less high just can you notice actually it's causing a movement in the pelvis a shortening on the right hand side now pause with the foot down and then bring your attention to your right knee, keeping the foot where it is, could you begin to slide the knee away from you and then towards you, away from you and then towards you. And as you're moving the knee away from you and towards you, can you feel actually it's bringing about a lot of movement, or it involves a lot of movement of the pelvis and the back. Just kind of exploring how far can you comfortably reach the knee away from you, how far can you comfortably bring it towards you on the floor. Away from you and towards you. Good. And 
then pause when the knee is neither too far away from you nor too close towards you. And then could you try again to lift the foot away from the floor and then bring it back down. And suddenly I feel a lot more of my back and my pelvis is involved in this. So you're just lifting it to where you can comfortably lift the foot. But again, I'll just show you this. It is actually possible if you allow a big movement of the pelvis to bring that foot towards the floor somewhere near the right elbow. But that involves a big movement of the pelvis to facilitate that movement, that lifting, lifting of the foot. A big movement in the back, a big change in the back. Please don't think you have to get it anywhere as close as that. I just wanted to show you what could be possible if you allow the back to move. Allow the leg to go long. And then please come and take a rest on the, on the back. This lesson is kind of just one version of quite a few lessons like this that can be done on the front. I call them the amphibian lessons. I think that's just my name for them. It doesn't, it's not an official category or anything like that. And as I said earlier, I've really grown to love these lessons because of the changes they bring into the back and the spine. And I see those changes in my students. But the important thing when doing any of these lessons is you don't simply try and copy maybe what I'm doing or what somebody else is doing, is that you really listen to what you're, you can easily do at this very moment. So um, I always hesitate showing some of these variations because I don't want students to necessarily think, oh God, that's where I've got to go. Um, you will get there if you, if you give yourself time and practice and patience and be kind to yourself. Um, but do, do take, take it within your own limits, particularly if you too have been suffering from something like COVID. Once you've had a sufficient rest, please come on to your front again and we'll explore those movements on the other side. So this time you would have your right cheek on the floor your right arm down by your side and your left arm hand just resting somewhere comfortable, comfortably near the head. And then begin to explore our first movement of rolling the pelvis to the right and then releasing. So as you're rolling the pelvis and of course the weight into the chest to the right. Think about our 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock exploration so that you begin to release the lower back. And then think about being able to slide the left knee up alongside you and then away from you. So just going carefully, rolling the pelvis to the left to slide that left knee up alongside you. Careful that you're not trying to lift the knee or the leg to try and force this and away from you. Again, thinking it's as a consequence of rolling the pelvis to the uh, right, you're able to slide the knee up alongside you. And then the next time you get the knee up alongside you, Pause there, bring your attention to your left foot and then begin to lift the heel, put it down and then the toe. So we'll go into both movements straight away on this side, just lifting the heel 
and then the toes. So lifting and lowering, good. Lifting the heel, putting it down, and then the toes, good. And then just see what is it like as a test to lift the foot away from the floor and then bring it back down. You just listen to how far can you comfortably lift it and then bring it back down. Can you feel something happening with the pelvis and the spine that enables you to lift the foot? See, if the pelvis stays very rigid, it will just, I can only lift the foot here. But as soon as I allow my pelvis and my spine to get involved, I'm able to lift the foot much higher. Now, pause with the foot down and then begin to slide the knee away from you and then towards you. So away from you to the side and then towards you. Like if you can see my back, it's involving a lot of movement in the pelvis and the spine to move the knee away and then towards me. It's a lovely opening for the lengthening for the muscles on the inner thigh, the adductor muscles. And then stay with the knee not too far away from you, not too close towards you. And see what is it like to lift the foot now. And then bring it back down. So you're just exploring your ability to lift the foot. And then bring it back down. And again, I'm showing quite a big movement. Yours, you know, you might, you might just get it here. That's absolutely fine. But just bringing your attention to, ah, can you feel something happening, softening in the back to allow you to take the foot a bit further. Pause. Slide the leg away from you. And then, if you'd like to, either stay resting on the front, or please kind of take a rest on the back. So I, as you're resting on the back, you can just take a moment to check in with the contact, how you're feeling, maybe roll the head. Suddenly mine's going a lot further, a lot more quickly quickly from side to side, notice how that feels. Maybe your feet have turned out a little bit more as the hips have released. Um, so I taught this lesson really, it's a preparatory lesson to my students to prepare their spines and their hips and their backs for a lesson I'd like to teach them next week. That in, and the lesson involves some of these movements um, and I thought this, this would be a great kind of pre-lesson to teach them, um, um, to prepare them for that lesson. Now that you've, um, we've done both sides, please come on to your back again, on to your front again I should say. <laughs> and then once more, have your left cheek on the mat your right hand near the head, your left arm down by your side. And just to repeat, I'm going through these variations quite quickly. If you need more time to explore them or rest, please don't hesitate to do that. So, and then return to just exploring your ability to slide the right leg up alongside you and then away from you. Maybe you're feeling, oh, it's much more easy, it's much easier to get this movement in the back. Back is softening to slide the right leg up alongside you. Once you've done that a few times, pause. And now, could you begin 
to roll your pelvis to the right and come back. So the pelvis is rolling to the right, the same direction that you're looking at, so still looking towards the right hand. And do go carefully here because, because the head is fixed by the floor, looking to the right, it means that we're asking the twit and the spine to twist in a much more complex way. So go carefully, you're rolling the pelvis to the right. Of course it's our extended definition of the pelvis, so I'm allowing some weight to shift to the right hand side of my chest as well. And you can begin to feel how the left leg is beginning to organise. So the left knee is beginning to present to the floor, the inside of the left foot. So that if you wanted to, and you move the pelvis sufficiently, the back sufficiently, you could begin to slide that left knee up alongside you and then slide it away. So the left knee slides up alongside you and then away. So you roll the pelvis to the right, allowing that left knee to slide up alongside you. Just checking your breathing, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed. Can you feel this more of a twist in the back and then slide the leg away from you. I'm beginning to realise as I teach this lesson that my brand new mat <laughs> and my new duck egg mat isn't so comfortable to do this lesson in bare knees. I wish I'd put a blanket on the mat to make it a little bit less smooth surface to slide on or put tracksuit bottoms on. Anyway, we'll per persevere, persevere. Please um, turn to the other side so that your right cheek is on the mat, your right arm is down by your side and your left hand is near the head. Could you begin to explore, so go carefully because we've changed everything in the spine. Could you begin to explore rolling your pelvis to the left and then come back. So pelvis, it's not just my pelvis, I'm letting weight shift over into the ribs on the left hand side and then come back. And once you feel that it's easy for you to do this, could you begin to slide your right leg up alongside you and then away. So right leg up alongside you and then away. So notice I'm, my right shoulder is down, I'm not sort of lifting that. So it involves rolling the pelvis, the chest to the left to allow you the space to bring that right knee up alongside you. And then away. Just a few more. Okay, breathing easily, jaw nice and relaxed. To slide that leg up alongside you. And then away. Good. Leave it alone. Bring your hands underneath the forehead. Just rest the forehead on the backs of the hands. And then just see what's it like to roll the pelvis a little bit from right to left. So again, I'm thinking not just of the pelvis, but the weight shifting to one side of the chest and then the other. And you'll notice that actually the pelvis or your tail, as though the tail is wagging in a big arc from one side to the other. Leave it.
it alone and probably a good idea to come and have a rest on the back. So a lot of powerful twists in those variations. Just take a moment to digest the effects of those twists, the movement we've been bringing there. You can just notice how the ribs are, how the length is in the back, and then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. Wow, feel that my head could roll off, off completely off to the side and off to the other side. It feels very nice. Once you've had sufficient rest, again, pausing the video if you need to, the film to, if you need to, please come again to lie on your front. Organise so that your left cheek is on the mat, your left arm is down by your side, your right hand is near the head. So what we've been doing earlier is sliding the right leg up, we did that earlier, and then we changed it to slide the left leg up alongside you. So now see if you can alternate. So I roll the pelvis to the left, so I can slide the right leg up alongside me. I let the leg go long, and then I roll the pelvis to the right, so to slide the left leg up alongside me. Slide it away, roll the pelvis all the way to the left to slide the right leg up alongside me, roll it away, roll it to the right to be able to slide the left leg up alongside me, and then away. So just going from side to side, noticing this big movement that's possible in the pelvis. Big movement from side to side. Good. And then please leave that alone. Just take a rest of the forehead on the backs of the hands. Just rolling everything a little bit from side to side. And then please come so that your right cheek is on the floor, your right arm is down by your side, your left hand near the head. And just being as lazy as possible with these movements. Can you roll the pelvis to the right to be able to slide the left leg up alongside you? Can you roll the pelvis to the left? be able to slide the right leg up alongside you. So it demands a lot of flexibility, a lot of softening in the chest and the ribs to be able to slide the alternate legs up alongside you. So it's important to make sure that the breath again is easy jaw is nice and relaxed, that you're not clenching into the hands, everything is as soft as possible, just using what's necessary for the movement to make it as easy as possible. Please, once you've explored those variations, just take a rest, rest for a moment. So just as you're resting, I'll just quickly explain. I mean, it's a lovely lesson to do. I just love how it changes my back. I love what it, I can see the changes in my students within 45 minutes to an hour as they explore these lessons. But it's not just that it's a nice lesson. Um, it ha it's why is it useful for us? And these movements of being able to move the pelvis back in space, 
can you see being able to direct the pelvis back in space is foundational to so many other movements of being able to organize our movement so that we can see I'm directing my pelvis back to transfer weight into the sit bones to organize around so if one to come up you see again it's that ability to move the pelvis separately and backwards from the chest and often often again as people get older you know from sitting and stuff like that and habits um, it's very hard for them to move the hips and the pelvis backwards. Okay, with that little talk interlude over, please come to lie on your front knee and have your left arm down by your side so your right cheek, so your left cheek is on the mat, your turn looking towards your right hand. And this time, could you stand your right hand, right arm, as if you're doing a press-up, so the elbow is up in the air. So you've created a little bridge, bridge underneath the right arm. And now, as you begin to roll the pelvis to the right, to the left, sorry, to slide your right knee up alongside you, could you move your head, your nose, towards your right knee? And then as the leg lengthens, bring that head back to its starting position. So you roll the pelvis to the left, and you bring the knee and the nose close together, or as close as you comfortably can, and then away. So together and then away. So as the, as you pay attention to the movement, so just notice for the head how actually it's a big softening in the chest that enables the head to come towards the knee and a big movement in the spine as the head goes back. So just as the pelvis was making a big movement, the head is being carried by the movement in the chest towards the knee and then away. They so just towards each other and then away. Good. Pause. Just rest, and then please come to explore that on the other side. So, right arm down by the side, left hand in a press-up position, your right cheek is on the mat. Could you begin to explore rolling the pelvis to the right to be able to slide the nose and the left knee towards each other, and then away from each other towards each other and then away from each other towards each other and then away from each other Good. and then pause and take a rest so you can rest on the front turning the head to one side or you can rest the forehead on the backs of the hands or come on to the back whatever is easiest for you But once you've had a little rest, then see, could you bring both hands into a press-up position so that your forehead this time is on the mat? And you've probably guessed what's coming. Could you begin to slide, the, roll the pelvis to the left to bring the right knee and the head towards each other, lengthen them away, and then go to the other side 
to bring the head and the knee towards each other, the head and the left knee. So you grow one side to the other side. Just going from side to side. And then just check, just pause to check, are your hands or your fingers facing in the right direction that will make this movement easier? So I've now turned my fingers to the side and I can feel that what that's done is release something in my shoulder. Once you've just explored, explored the movement from side to side, pause, leave it alone, and take a rest. Come to rest on the back. And then just notice how everything feels coming onto the back. Do you feel the back is changed? Maybe the, the hips even feel a little bit more clearly, the freedom in the hips. Uh, maybe the shoulders down a little bit more, maybe they're not, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't matter what mine are doing, it's what yours are doing that's important. And then just try rolling the head a little bit from side to side. And then pause, bend the knees, roll to the side, and come up. So, I'll end the lesson there. There's lots more that could be done as part of these series and that I'll try and explore in other, other videos. But it's a great preparatory lesson for some of the lessons to come. Great, great variations to do in their own right. My big regret is actually not having covered my mat. I'm beginning to get carpet burn to the inside of my knee. Um, hopefully you won't have the same pro problem. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. And stay safe everybody, stay well and safe.